So, uh, you've made some really interesting films in your career. There really isn't a true antecedent, though, for a film like this. No. What brought you to this project? Well, I, you know, I don't think there's many antecedents in literature either. I mean, yes. what Suzanne did was so bold, so brave, such an apocryphal tale, such a cautionary tale. I was knocked out like anybody else was when I read the book for the first time. So, I mean, I got hammered by that. And um, I don't know that anybody's prepared to do a movie like this. It's different than any, and shot differently than any movie I've ever done, mm -hmm. you know? So I was just immersed like everybody else was. Uh, you mentioned that it's shot differently. There's a lot of handheld, and it, and it seems like the framing the, is really tight, a lot of close-ups. Mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. sort of motivated that aesthetic? Well, you need to be in Canada's point of view. I mean, if you just read the book for the first time, what do you hit by? It's this urgent first-person narrative. It's a first-person present narrative, right? So my job is to put you in her head subjectively the way the book did. And that means I'm not popping from place to place and establishing a character within it. That means I'm in the eyes of that character, restricting the information that that character has, or what the audience has to what that character has, and moving in this serpentine world in her vision through the movie. So that requires a different set of cinematic techniques. I also wanted it to feel glimpsed and captured and caught. And there's a lot of verite techniques in there in order to do that, because if it gets sort of slick and glossy, then I'm guilty of what the capital's guilty of. In other words, right, then I'm presenting a lurid pageant that is the Hunger Games instead of Katniss's point of view about the Hunger Games. So that's what dictated the shooting style. There seems to be uh, a lot of sort of parallels to Winner's Bone, at least in the opening <laughs> moments of the film. Uh, was Jennifer always someone you were looking at for the role? or Only because she's such a great actress. I mean, you know, I I if you look at actresses in her generation and you look at Winner's Bone and her other work, obviously she's going to be on a very short list, you know. Not many people get nominated for Best Actress at 19 or years old or whatever it is. I mean, she's a remarkable, special, amazing talent. So, yeah. But then when I met with her, she embodied so many things that the character had. There was a strength, a solidity, a courage, a bravery, a assuredness. Uh, and then when she read for me, she just, you know, there was an audition process, and she just knocked my socks off. She floored me with her audition. I couldn't believe what I was seeing in front of me. So it was pretty clear. Science fiction has always been a tremendous tool for sort of commenting on our current of climate. Uh, what do you see, what do you see as the central message of this film? What do you think? Well, I think there are a couple. I mean, I think that obviously it's a cautionary tale about where we might devolve as a culture. It takes reality television, This culture that we live in, a media-based culture where we build people up to tear them down, to, you, you, you know, it's this wireistic pageant that we play out in front of us, and it's only a half step into a culture where we can see this used as a political instrument, the way the Romans used the circus, you know, there's that phrase, give them bread and circuses, right? Engage them in entertainment, get them to participate, get them to play your game, and it's an instrument of political control. So I think it's a cautionary tale that Suzanne was telling in that way. But I think there's something else under it, too, which is that Katniss is on a very personal journey, and she starts as someone who only can scrape and scrounge for her own survival. Uh, she's trying to survive above all else, and by the end of the movie, she's willing to give her life rather than cross an ethical line that she's seen so clearly. And she evolves to someone who's more empathic, more sensitive, more caring. And that provides strength, not weakness. And I think that there, there's a lot on its mind in this movie. Humanity prevails. I, I, I think so. Or at least one struggles to preserve one's humanity. I'm not sure it definitely does prevail. But I think that's the struggle and that's the question.